Let's look at the cascade in cascading style sheets. You know, you'll see what I mean in a second. So what we've done is let's select all. When we've let's scroll this down here a little bit. Now, when we've created our three heading rules, right? You notice that I didn't select any particular font for them. Actually, did we set the font anywhere? See, I didn't select the font anywhere. So uh, let's actually do that. Let's let's create a new rule, and we're going to redefine a tag. And I'm going to select body, which is if you re if you recall, the body is the root tag in terms of the visible page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the font to Georgia. I just hit apply. If you notice, the fonts have all changed now. So I'm going to go uh, F12. Let me save that again, F12. And here we go. We have our page. You notice now all the fonts are in Georgia. Why? Because we set that, this is the old font, right? We set the CSS rule in the body. And the body is the outermost tag of the visible page, right? Body, body, everything else that is seen in the page by people, or by actual people seeing your site, is in between the body tags. So whatever rule that we apply to body will affect everything else in here. So since we said in body, if we look over here, font family is Georgia, we know that every other element in between the body tags will have a font family of Georgia. Does that make sense? Because it's underneath or it's inside of body, opening body, closing body. I hope that makes sense. So that rule, that CSS rule where we stated that the font family should be Georgia to anything in body, of course, gets applied to anything inside of the body. Now, what the cascade also allows you to do, it allows you to override global rules. So let's say we, we've created, in this case rather, we've created this rule for body where we said the font family is Georgia, right? But if we wanted to, we could say, well, okay, font family is Georgia except, except for anything inside of P tags. And how do we do that? Well, we can do that by, did we redefine the P tag here? Let's check. No, we, we can create a rule for p tags and we can change the fonts so let's let's do that right now and we'll see what happens so again we're going to create a new rule redefine a tag and I'm going to look for a p here p for paragraph I go okay so all I want to do here is I want to change the font in the uh, p tags to to Arial and then let me try that again Arial hit apply so let's save that and let's preview. So as you can see now, this is Arial and this is Georgia. If you don't believe me, let's actually change that again. Let's go to P. Sign view. We go to P. I'm going to change the font family here. I'm going to change it to Verdana. See how it's changed again? Again, this is the only one it's changed, not this, not this particular font here. And to make to, to prove that to you, just take pay attention to fonts here as I change it. So now I'm going to change it back to the Georgia font. Notice how this is not changing at all, right? Because I'm only affecting the P's here. So what happens, what you can learn from this rather, is that if you have a rule, a CSS rule, that applies to a tag or a class that, uh, well, that's an ID actually, or even to an ID, whatever's closer to that tag, if you will, will have, will override the overriding rule. So the best way to explain this is actually just illustrate the example. So we had a rule for body saying that the font should be Georgia for the page. Anything in between body and body, we should have a font of Georgia, right? Font Georgia. But I also had another rule that said anything inside of a paragraph, p tag, I'll select it over here, p, p tag, well, let's switch this to uh, Verdana. 
Anything inside a P tag should be Verdana. Since the P's are closer to the text, right? That means that this rule, this P tag rule, will override the body rule, right? So I hope that makes sense. That's the point of the cascade in cascading style sheets, where it allows you to have rules, CSS rules, override other CSS rules. This may be a hard one to understand, but just think of it as a uh, level of command. In this case, the general, the general's orders do not override the sergeant's order in the battlefield. The sergeant's orders will supersede, will be more important than the generals. Why? Because the sergeant's talking to the guy directly, whereas the general's a few steps away. One thing you want to take away from this is that these rules, these cascading rules in cascading style sheets in CSS, they apply to any rule that you can apply on a web page. So it's not just fonts. It could be background colors. It could be margins, padding. It could be anything. So you have to understand that cascade. So you have to. So you might at one point set your uh, on your body tag since it's the uppermost tag. It's the outermost tag, right? You may say, okay, I'm going to set my fonts to Georgia for the page. But then at some other point, you set your fonts to Verdana in the paragraph, and you're asking yourself, well, why are my paragraphs Verdana when I set the page? font to Georgia. Well, you're going to know that because the P is going to override the body rules because the P is closer to, is sitting right beside the text that it's affecting, right? If this doesn't make sense. Just play with it a little bit and I think it will sink in over time. The uh, last thing I want to cover in this video is uh, the visual aids that you get when in design mode. So let me show you by collapsing these first. I want to create a little bit of real estate for us. If you recall, when I selected, let's say, this div, you see how we had this visual representation of the margin, right? And we had all these lines and the padding. So we see what's going on. But sometimes, especially when you get really experienced with this kind of stuff, it gets in the way and it's just a nuisance. So what you can do is you can go into view, and you go to visual aids and you can choose all kinds of different things that you can decide to hide and show depending on what you want to do. So let's say I want to take out box model. So let's try that. You see I don't see the, the, uh, the outline now. So let's say I go back here and I go to uh, view, visual aids, layout, CSS layout outlines. So all of a sudden we don't see the grid pattern that we saw before, right? We see a closer approximation to what we would actually see on our web page. I hope that makes sense to you. So let's uh, let's turn them back on just so that you get an idea. Outlines. Now you see the outline right, right here, the dashed outline. We go view, visual aids, box model. So now when we select the box, we actually get our margin representation here. There are a lot of other aspects in terms of the uh, tool sets that you have in Dreamweaver. I want to explore a few more of them as we close out this video course. That said, I want you to understand that I'm not covering everything that you can possibly do in Dreamweaver. This is a, a beginner's course designed to get you up and running, and I wanted you to understand the most important things so that you can actually put out pages. But once you have this basic knowledge, you should be able to a lot more easily explore all the various tools that you have in Dreamweaver. And a final point with regards to that, like any other piece of software, depending on your working style and depending on how you like to do things, you will probably end up only using a fraction of the tools that you find in Dreamweaver. There are a lot of things in Dreamweaver that I'm not discussing, and the reason I'm not discussing them is because they're things that I don't use myself very often and I don't find them very important. I may have additional videos at a later point if I get enough of a demand, but at this point in time, I wouldn't be too concerned that I'm not, don't be too concerned rather, that I'm not covering all the drop-down lists and all and every single little button because that would put just about everybody to sleep. 